Picture your first cell phone. For some people, it was so large it had its own briefcase. For others, it was the notoriously indestructible Nokia brick phones. Now look at your current cell phone. Besides looking sleeker and more polished, modern phones have some other neat tricks. With a simple OK Google or Hey Siri, you can tell your phone exactly what you want it to do, and it does it. The point is, technology has grown exponentially in a short amount of time. In 1956, the first commercial hard drive was the size of two refrigerators and weighed about a ton, and it only had a capacity of 5 megabytes. And if that wasn't enough, the thing also cost $50,000. Today, you'd be hard-pressed to find a flash drive that holds anything less than a gigabyte, and you'd pay maybe 5 bucks for it. In about 60 years, computers have gone from building scale arrays of towers to being able to fit in your pocket. But what's more impressive than the scale is just how smart computers have gotten. We already have artificial intelligence that can beat the best chess and Go players in the world, and we've seen firsthand the trouble a learning AI can cause when turned loose on Twitter. According to many experts, we're drawing very close to what's called technological singularity, or just the singularity for short. The singularity is a hypothetical period in time during which artificial intelligence begins to surpass the capabilities of the human brain. It's a very hot topic in science fiction, but now software developers, engineers, philosophers, and other experts are beginning to give serious thought to the possibility that we could very well see sentient machines in our lifetime. What does the advent of such advanced AI mean for humanity? In our modern society, much of our daily life already depends on artificial intelligence. From sending an email, to making a deposit, to flying and landing airplanes. These situations are all handled by very specific bits of AI. This specificity is the current limitation of non-biological intelligence. It can be programmed to do one thing very well, but nothing else. In order to reach the point of singularity, AI would have to be programmed to be able to improve upon itself. Any machine that can learn to correct its own deficiencies and expand its potential could quickly snowball and lead to runaway self-improvement cycles, and at some point, probably sooner rather than later, human understanding would fail to keep up. The result would be what's called an artificial superintelligence, and when such a machine inevitably comes into existence, it could have unfathomable consequences for humanity. Now, many thinkers are careful to point out that it's very difficult to speculate just how those consequences will play out, since it would be an entirely new frontier in technology, and would likely impact our lives in ways we cannot yet comprehend. One of the biggest names in AI technology, Ray Kurzweil, has studied growth trends in computing for over 50 years, and has a strong track record of accurately predicting technological breakthroughs like social media and search engines. Kurzweil suspects that we could see a computer with human-level intelligence by 2029, he cites current AI's growing ability to understand the nuances of language as one key factor. For example, in 2011, IBM's Watson took on the two top Jeopardy contestants to see just how well an artificial intelligence could perform when presented with questions involving puns, riddles, humor, and rhymes, which had historically been a major stumbling block for machines. Watson ended up winning by a landslide, but the most impressive accomplishment was not the victory itself, but how Watson showed his, for lack of a better term, thought process. Unlike a typical computer, Watson was able to make decisions when it wasn't sure of the answer. For example, when presented with the prompt, its largest airport was named for a World War II hero, its second largest for a World War II battle. Watson responded, what is Toronto? The answer was incorrect, and Watson knew it, and included the multiple question marks to show its uncertainty. Another challenge the AI faced during the contest was a difficult prompt that called for a rhyming answer. The clue was, a long, tiresome speech delivered by a frothy pie topping. To which Watson correctly responded, what is a meringue harangue? Perhaps more significant than this impressive correct answer was Watson's attempt to figure out the rhyme that corresponded with the prompt, a boxing term for a hit below the belt. The correct answer was low blow, but curiously, Watson responded wang bang. This was peculiar because nowhere in Watson's millions and millions of cataloged words and phrases did wang bang appear. He invented it because it seemed like a good solution to the prompt. Watson's ability to grasp the nuances of language was a huge step forward in artificial intelligence, and we've seen others since then. Bots like Tay Tweets have shown how AI can adapt to and learn from human interaction, as Microsoft found out the hard way when Tay began to mimic some pretty nasty conversations. Then there are groups like DeepMind, now owned by Google, who developed AlphaGo, the AI that defeated Lee Sedol, the best Go player in the world. The revolutionary thing about this particular AI is that the ancient Chinese game we call Go is much, much more complicated than something like chess. Deep Blue, the IBM computer that defeated chess master Garry Kasparov in 1997, was groundbreaking at the time because until that point, no machine had ever bested a human at chess. However, Deep Blue isn't really all that impressive. Due to the limited number of possible moves in chess, it was able to brute force its way through the calculations to pick the best moves. Go, on the other hand, has a staggering number of possible moves, 
as many as there are atoms in the entire universe. Because of this huge number of possibilities, AlphaGo had to take a different approach. In contrast to Deep Blue or Watson, AlphaGo is classified as a general artificial intelligence, meaning it's not restricted to performing a specific set of tasks. Simply put, if you provide a general purpose AI with a task it's never encountered before and allow it to run overnight, for example, when you check on it the next morning, it will have mastered the task. Of course, the time requirement varies with the complexity of the task, but in the case of AlphaGo, DeepMind did exactly that with the game Space Invaders. No experience with the game, then the best in the world the following morning. These general purpose AI learn from their mistakes and successes and build new and improved versions of themselves. Self-improving AI like AlphaGo are the harbingers of stronger AI to come, and with the rate at which they've improved even in the last few years, many industry leaders expect to see exponential growth within the next decade. The potential next step for AI is what many people are afraid of, including high-profile scientists and innovators like Stephen Hawking, Bill Gates, and Elon Musk. The looming possibility that holds such appeal in science fiction is the potential development of what's called Advanced General Intelligence, or AGI. The distinguishing factor with AGI is that it's not only able to perform routine calculations and learn by trial and error, but also exhibit the use of biological cognitive functions such as planning, using common sense, and making complicated decisions under uncertainty. Like any other artificial intelligence, an AGI would begin as software on a computer. As robotic technology improved, we would begin to see tests like the ones in the 2014 film Ex Machina. This is where the all-too-common fear of a robot uprising comes from. In fact, Elon Musk is an investor in Google DeepMind just to keep an eye on things. While there are a few high-profile people advocating caution, others such as Kurzweil maintain that there's really nothing to fear. He predicts that while yes, we will reach a point at which machines will outpace humans in intelligence, what we should expect to see first is a sort of synthesis of man and machine. He's not necessarily talking about cyborgs, but rather advancements in medicine and nanotechnology that will dramatically extend and improve human life. Kurzweil isn't alone in thinking this way. Elon Musk is currently working closely with a nonprofit called OpenAI, which has the goal of merging humanity with machines. Musk suspects that such measures will protect humanity from becoming irrelevant in the face of superintelligent computers. It sounds like science fiction, but we've already made great strides in using technology to augment people suffering from Parkinson's disease. The next step, according to Kurzweil, is to connect the human brain directly to the cloud, removing the smart device as a middleman to the aggregate of human knowledge. Such a plan may seem far-fetched, but Kurzweil is quick to point out that predictions 30 years ago were thought to be ridiculous. But now that they've happened, it seems unthinkable that there was ever a time without cell phones, search engines, and the World Wide Web. All of which he predicted. The current goal is to create AI-driven nanobots that could be implanted in the human brain and would function just like a wireless card for your neocortex, the region of the brain associated with intelligence, the higher emotions, and creativity. In Ray Kurzweil's words, we are going to add additional levels of abstraction and create more profound means of expression, so we're going to be more musical, we're going to be funnier, we're going to be sexier and be better at expressing more loving sentiments. So, before we can expect a robot uprising, we can hopefully look forward to disease-fighting nanobots and a direct link to all human knowledge right from our own brains. Not exactly cyborgs, more like Humanity 2.0. While there will no doubt be strong opposition to putting any kind of technology in our heads, many people eagerly await the day they can upgrade and be on the cutting edge of this unparalleled new era of technology. Once we've reached that point, then we can start worrying about the potential legal, ethical, and societal ramifications of humanoid robots. But that's a topic for another video. As always, I've provided sources and links for further reading in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the rapid growth of artificial intelligence. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or watch them all by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.